Well, you're most welcome to today's talk. It's Thursday, the 15th of September. I'm actually still working in Africa at the moment, but I really had to bring this report to you. It really is quite uh, quite impactful, as you'll see. I've been getting lots of questions. Is it true that the Lancet Commission is, shall we say, leaving open the possibility that the SARS coronavirus 2 virus originated in the United States? Um, now, it's only one of several possibilities. I've got to be quite careful about what I say on this video. So I'm going to go to the original sources and we'll see that my interpretation of it is that the commission leaves open the possibility of a, of a scientific research based leak of the virus without specifying the country. Well, of course, still leaving open the possibility of a spillover zoonotic infection. So pretty, pretty hard hitting stuff. Let's get straight down to the evidence as, as we always try and do. Now um, this is the Lancet Commission on lessons for the future of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now this is why this is important. You know I don't really want to do attribution of blame and accountability is important but we have to look at the future possibility because basically in this pandemic we have got away lightly. Now the death toll is appalling, the suffering is appalling but we, this could have been a virus with a 50% mortality rate. Heck it could have been a virus with an 80% mortality rate or a 90% mortality rate. They exist. And if that had been the case, would we have handled this any better? Um, yeah, well, more on that later, but we probably wouldn't is, is the sort of the, the conclusion on that. Anyway, let's, let's get straight down to this evidence. Now, this here is the um, actual paper that we're going to be looking at. And this is the actual uh, report from the, from the Lancet. The paper is extensive. It runs to 52 pages and there'll probably be more to say on it fairly soon. It's a pretty interesting document. Now, viral origins, um, the proximal origins of SARS coronavirus 2 remain unknown. So the distal origins, of course, of this virus goes back probably, I don't know, billions of years whenever viruses were first invented or first came along. No one knows where viruses came from. But the proximal cause is where it came from immediately prior to the start of this pandemic. And the Lancet Commission here is saying we simply don't know. We don't have that information is what they are saying. So they simply don't know where it came from. There we go. So they simply, they simply don't know that. Remains unknown. Two leading hypotheses. Two leading ideas on this. That the virus emerged as a zoonotic spillover from a wildlife farm or a farm animal. So zoonotic, as, as we know, that's possible. Possibly through a wet market in a location that is still undetermined. So they're saying here that they're not really, seem to be saying here, they're not really buying the, the Wuhan uh, wet market uh, hypothesis necessarily because they're saying the location, location is still unknown. Could be anywhere. They're leaving open a range of possibilities here, that is for sure. Still undetermined. Or that the virus emerges as a research-related incident. During a field collection of the virus, so that's possible because that, that's research. And we know, we know that these uh, coronaviruses have been collected from at various parts of China. And we also know that the United States authorities were interested in researching um, coronaviruses. And I'm using understatement here, if anything. Um, or through a laboratory associated escape. So this is a possible, they're leaving this open as a definite possibility. They're saying no independent, transparent, and scientific based investigation has been carried out regarding the bioengineering of a SARS like virus that was underway before the outbreak of COVID-19. So this is quite alarming. They're actually saying that this research was underway. Scientific based and carried out into the, regarding the bioengineering of the SARS coronavirus 2 virus. So that is pretty hard hitting stuff that this research was going on. Uh, no ambiguity about that in their mind. Uh, the laboratory notebooks, uh, databases, email records, samples of uh, institutions involving such research have uh, not been uh, made available to independent researchers. Um, why not? This is outrageous. There, there should be transparency here and there is anything but not acceptable. Uh, independent researchers have not yet investigated the U.S. laboratories engaged in laboratory manipulation 
of SARS coronavirus to like viruses. So notice what they're saying here. Independent researchers have not yet investigated the US laboratories. And they seem to be taking it for granted here that they were engaged in the laboratory manipulation of SARS coronavirus to like viruses. Direct quotes from the Lancet article. That they, that in their mind, this was clearly going on. Why haven't we been informed about this? Uh, nor have they investigated the details of the laboratory research that had been undertaken in Wuhan. So for sure it was going on in Wuhan as well. And we know that there was some... Uh, what, what, what phrase shall, shall we use here? Um, sh shall we say there was cross-fertilization cross of ideas between the United States and the, and the Chinese groupings that working on this? So, um, had been undertaken... That they're making assumptions here that really we hadn't really had before. Or, or they're not making assumptions, things that we'd assumed before, they're actually making in black and white that this, these things were going on. Uh, the US National Institutes of Health has resisted, quite clearly saying, has resisted disclosure of details of the research of SARS coronavirus 2 related viruses that it had been supporting. So here we see the NIH had been, the, the, the Lancet Commission is saying they had been supporting this research. But it has resisted disclosing details. Again, we need to know why. We've suffered this pandemic. We need to know about it. But they do provide extensively redacted information only as requested by the Freedom of Information Act lawsuits. Are we really in a situation where the National Institutes of Health will only tell us anything in a highly redacted form if they are forced to by act of law? This is just, to me, outrageous. We simply... Why won't they tell us what's going on here? This is not conspiracy theory. This is the Lancet Commission. It sounds like I've gone a bit tinfoil hat, but I haven't. This is all data from the Lancet Commission. Do check out the references for yourself. As always, don't take my word for anything. Uh, in brief, there may be many potential proximal origins of the SARS coronavirus too, but there's still a shortfall of independent scientific and collaborative work on the issue. Shortfall is uh, perhaps understatement there. Uh, the search for the origins of the virus requires unbiased, independent, transparent and rigorous work by international teams of uh, virologists, epidemiologists, bioinformatics, anyone we can get, basically, and other related fields, all supported by governments. This is a project that governments around the world should be supporting. Now, the governments around the world were happy enough to spend untold billions on all these lockdown measures and all these things that didn't particularly that are open to, uh, open to interpretation, shall we say. Um, but now we need to find out what's happening because this could happen again and the next virus could have an 80-90% mortality rate. It's not absurd to say we could be looking at the death of billions of people next time. We need to learn from this. If we learn from this, they could potentially... I mean, I don't want to indulge in too many you know, over-the-top statements, but, but um, you know, the future of civilization could be at stake as a result of a viral pandemic in the future. That is, that, that's been recognized for a long time. We need to learn and get this right, supported by governments. Now, in the absence of unbiased, independent and rigorous search for a natural origin by a, a multidisciplinary team of experts alongside an unbiased, independent and rigorous in investigation into the research-related hypotheses, we need to be looking at both. They are clearly le leaving open the possibility of both here. And to be quite honest, um, it's got to be one or the other, hasn't it? Now, this has to have been a natural event, or it has to be a human, shall we say, facilitated event. I actually can't think of a third possibility. Viruses do not come from space. Uh, Fred Hoyle, the great sci British scientist, thought that was a possibility. Uh, it's not. Um, it, this, this virus, um, he was a man of his time, of course. I'm sure he would change his opinions now. But uh, this virus either had a natural origin, um, it didn't come from space, so it had a natural origin, or a human facilitated origin. Take your pick, natural or human facilitated, it's one of those two. And that's clearly the thinking of the, uh, the Lancet, which is, is good. It's good that they've got this open-mindedness. Um, now, if this doesn't happen, the public's trust in science will be imperiled. Now, this could be one of the most dangerous things. I know from the thousands of comments I get that people aren't trusting scientists at the moment. Now, we have to differentiate here. But I mean, science is humankind 
It is our endeavour to understand empirically the nature of reality. So science itself is good, but the way science is being communicated to us, the science we're allowed to learn about, the science that's kept hidden from us, means that the version of science that trickles down to us as individuals, we don't trust it anymore. And that needs to change. We need to be able to trust the empirical nature of reality because that's what science is. Otherwise, we would become detached from reality itself. So that's at risk. Um, the, the stakes couldn't, well, they could be higher, I suppose, but the, the stakes are pretty, pretty high here with potentially grave long-term repercussions. It's therefore crucial to investigate all hypotheses fully, not only to ascertain the source of the pandemic and to protect against future emerging infectious diseases, but also to ensure the integrity of science itself. Wow. Impressive words from the Lancet Commission. The perceived lack of transparency to date by leading scientific agencies and laboratories is troubling and needs to be addressed. I mean, for goodness sake, I mean, I mean, you know, at least in the UK and the US situation, we're paying for this research. We're paying for it. And if you went into a shop and you bought um, a, a, a kilo of bananas and the shopkeeper says, well, you've paid, but you can't have the bananas. I wouldn't be very happy. I paid for this research. I want, I want the data. Tell me. You know, this, it, it, this, isn't, this is it's just, yeah, it's, they're, they're, they're keeping this from us despite the fact we paid for it. It's troubling. Strategies to prevent research, um, research related release should include stronger international and national oversight of biosafety, bio risk management, including the strict regulation of gain of function, of, of gain of function research of concern. So again, the Lancet here seemed to be just assuming that gain-of-function research was undertaken. Now, certain authorities have assured us there wasn't gain-of-function research. This seems to be taken as an axiomatic assumption that there was gain-of-function research. When investigating the origins of any novel pathogen, a uh, potential hypothesis should not be prematurely rejected. And this is what happened, we were told by quite a few authorities that this was a natural spillover event and it was not a laboratory or a research related investigation. The Lancet report is now saying that we shouldn't potentially, that we shouldn't prematurely rather, shouldn't prematurely reject this sort of uh, possibility. We should, scientists hold all possibilities open until the evidence is there to go one way or the other. Why did we abandon our scientific principles? shouldn't prematurely reject these things such as early case information laboratory records are collected so because this was rejected early um, a lot of information has been lost and a lot of this information is pretty time sensitive um, it might not be there in a period of time so what do we conclude well the Lancet seems to be leaving op open the possibility of natural zoonotic spillover whether from a farm whether from wildlife whether from animal abuse in China or, or whatever it is um, or the possibility that it was research related. If it was research related, it could have been from collecting viruses, it could have been from a laboratory related incident, and they're leaving open the possibility that it could have been from a laboratory in the United States, or possibly a laboratory for which the United States had a, uh, an overseas laboratory for which the, in which the United States had a interest, shall we say. So there we go. Um, interesting stuff. More to come on that. More from that report uh, when we get the time, because there's some pretty hard hitting uh, lessons of failures uh, and uh, suggestions for future improvement. But for now, um, we're following this one with interest. At the moment, we don't have enough information to know which way this will go. I just hope that eventually we find out. Thank you for watching.